After the recent patch from Battalion 1944, it's been growing and growing, and rightly so because it's an awesome game. I made a video a couple of days ago, I'll link it in the description. I'm not gonna repeat everything from there, so just watch it. Today, I'll go over some very basic stuff when you launch the game and how to get started with competitive. Before you jump in any game, just hit training and press yes. And don't worry, it's not a tutorial, it's just a training map. Before we go any further, this is the game on Ultra Graphics. Everything completely maxed out. Oh yes, you might be thinking, the game is looking Looking good and I did leave the FPS top right corner and you can see that even though it's on ultra graphics I'm still getting way over 100 FPS easily personally I played this game for the gameplay and the multiplayer so I put everything on low and I turn off everything that can be turned off this is how the game looks with everything turned off and this is how I choose to play it and if you look at my FPS they're constantly pretty much 200 and yes for some reason the game caps the FPS at 200 based on your computer or how you want to play decide which graphics you're gonna run then hop over to sound and I choose to turn off all the music and ambient volume because it doesn't do anything for the gameplay and the master volume should be whatever your headphones are comfortable with. In controls, put the mouse sensitivity that works for you. For me, it's 2 at 400 dpi. In terms of binds, that's totally up to you how you want to play. Then in gameplay, turn off head bob because it'll be easier when you run. And I personally recommend to scroll down all the way to word hide and where it says individual player info and overview, disable that. This will make it so at the top will show you the number of players alive. That way, if it's a 1v2, it's easier than looking at the pictures and trying to figure out who's dead and who's alive. This is logical and we're not going to talk too much about it, but spend some time and get used to the weapons, especially the snipers and bolt action. They are very strong. 95% of the time, one shot kill. Before you play competitive, spend some time in arcade or rifles only so you can learn the maps and the guns. Note that rifles only is limited time, so I don't don't know for how long and you have access to all the rifles scoped not scoped and semi-automatic so it's a really good way to practice arcade can be fun too but you don't know what you're gonna end up in but you get all the weapons and keep in mind that axes and allies have different weapons there is a server browser and i don't want to hit this game too hard but it's not working for me the pings are completely messed up half the servers don't show up so i don't use this at all what i do want to show you is create land and that's creating your own server I'm going to put this little tab on default. So this is exactly what you should see when you launch this. These are all the maps that you can play. And I know it looks like a lot of them, but trust me, they're pretty easy to learn. For this video, let's say that we want to learn coastal. We can choose one mode to practice. Most of the time it's going to be word hide because that's what competitive is. You can put a server name and a password, but keep in mind that it's a local area network server. I'm not going to go through all the options, but click on server and turn on strat mode because this will allow you to do various training abilities. After that, I start a server auto assign and if you want to just roam the map don't press f1 to ready up and you can roam the map for as long as you want to if you google battalion 1944 server commands and let's click on the first link you will get a list with everything that you can use once the server is started you can change the map the mode everything just from console by default the console key for me was tilde so i think it's the same for everybody if you want to practice grenades and smokes for example i'm going to type in server dot give grenade a thousand and now I have a thousand grenades. For smoke grenades, I'm going to type in server.give smoke grenade a thousand and one. And now I have a thousand and one smokes. Go ahead and practice whatever you want to do. And let me show you something cool. If you go to binds and scroll all the way to the bottom, follow grenade. Again, I think by default is Z. I just left it as default. And now when you throw a grenade and you press Z, oh, look at that. It follows it. And now you can practice grenades and know exactly where they're going to go, how they're going to go, go for those trick shots and figure out which angles work and which angles don't work however at this very moment there's one little problem which i'm sure is going to be fixed smoke grenades don't get followed however if you throw a grenade and then instantly throw a smoke grenade and press z it follows the smoke grenade so i'm sure this is just going to be fixed very soon i'm just letting you guys know if you're going to try it however the grenades and the smokes pretty much go exactly the same distance so you can practice with the grenades let's say for example you're going to try to get this grenade in that door well hold on that didn't work i'm gonna move it a little to the left oh that's way too low i'm gonna try again this is that's fine but i think if we move it a little to the right i can get 
it right in the door. So this is where the grenades. Now I can throw a smoke grenade and the smoke goes exactly where I practice with the grenades. Again, this is probably just going to be fixed in one little patch. I'm not going to spend too much time on this, but you can do server dot add bot and this will add bots in the map so you can practice offline with bots. The game was designed for 10 to 12 players. So if you add like 70 bots, your game is going to be very laggy. If you want to practice the way a competitive game would be just to ready up with however many bots you want to play and it'll start a game the way you would do in competitive first is going to be the knife round and i know everybody has pistols but nobody has ammo and you just got to knife the other team and whichever team wins they will choose on which side to start allies or axis and then the game is going to start a regular 5v5 or 5v7 if you don't know how to add bots properly i'll explain competitive to you guys let me just do it from a csgo perspective because most of you guys understand csgo 16 rounds is what you need to win which means that you play 15 rounds on one side and then you need one more round on the other side in order to win there is the case where you play 15 rounds and 15 rounds and there's 30 rounds total and the game ends in a tie comparing that to battalion 1944 you need 13 rounds to win meaning that you need 12 wins on one side one on the other side and then you win there's also the case where you win 12 rounds and lose 12 rounds which ends up in an overtime and you have to play six more rounds three on one side one on the other you have to win with four out of the six rounds if you don't win them and let's say you lose the other three then you're back to overtime and you do another six rounds and another six rounds until somebody wins playing competitive is very easy you hit play you hit competitive log in through your face it if you have to you don't need to have face it premium you can easily do it with the free one and then you can do 5v5 or 1v1 and just hit find match you can play solo or with friends and once it matches you with people you hit accept one player from each side is going to be a team captain and don't be scared if you're ever the team captain all you have to do is drop the maps that you don't want to play and you go back and forth dropping the maps that you don't want to play and of course you can talk to your team like hey should we play this map or whatnot until one map is left and that's the map that you play when everybody is connected you're all going to start out with a 5v5 knife round and whoever wins the knife round decides which side they're going to play in the buy menu you can see how many tokens you have or coins whatever you want to call it and you can get a weapon for free every round or you can upgrade to something else and you can see the different pricing that it costs on the left you see your team and their loadout and how many tokens they have and what they buy and if you want to give them tokens you can press donate and it will give them one token and you can press it as many times as you have tokens tokens you get at the end of the round depending how the round went you get bonus for winning kills objectives etc whatever weapon you have you cannot drop it which means at the end of the round if you want to pick up a sniper for your teammate you're not going to be able to give him the sniper because you can't drop weapons that's why you have the donate system I'm only saying this because I've seen it happen multiple times. If you cannot hear your teammates or you cannot talk and you change your input and output device or whatever you do over there, you might have to restart your game in order for it to take effect. Whenever you hit an enemy, you're going to get hit markers if it is a clear shot. But if you want to shoot through walls, you can, the thin ones, and you will do damage, but you're not going to see the hit markers. You have two weapons, your main and a pistol. If, for example, you take out an enemy or you find a dead body that has another gun, you can swap for it. And the smart thing to do is to switch to your pistol then swap the weapon and now you have two good weapons if you survive the round like any other game you get to keep your loadout for the next round however little note if you already have the weapon on the ground you can't pick it up again you can't have two of the same guns on you when somebody dies if they have a grenade and a smoke that they didn't use it just simply falls on the ground so all you have to do is walk over them and you pick them up you can only have one of each the game is going to change colors a little bit i'm doing this in post editing look around my screen once once I get hit, you will see that my screen goes a little bit red. That means that I am hit. There is no meds in this game, but there is health regeneration like it is in Call of Duty. So all you have to do is stay out of combat and you can see it going away. And as it goes away, you start healing and you get back to full health. You personally don't have a health bar, but right here at the bottom, you can see my teammate got hit. He waited a few seconds and this is the speed that you regenerate your health all the way to full. Ignore the shooting in the background for a second, but you can run and you can walk and obviously they're going to hear your footsteps but if you aim down sights or you walk while crouch you move a lot slower but you don't make any noise at all let's say i won this round and i end with this loadout a rifle and a sniper as my secondary it does cross over to the next round no problem but if i bring up the menu and i buy a gun even one that's worse than the one i have it will replace my main gun even if you switch to your secondary weapon then buy one it'll still replace your main gun because i think it's supposed to be so you don't replace your pistol in 
second base with another gun only if you get to pick it up off somebody after you played a total of 12 rounds then you switch sides and you play with the exact same team but on the other side of the map this is how the bomb looks like and you gotta either plant it a or b it's just like in csgo only the terrorists can move the bomb only you and your team can move it the other team cannot touch your bomb rounds are normally one minute and 45 seconds it takes five seconds to plant the bomb 7.5 seconds to defuse the bomb and the bomb goes boom after 50 seconds other than that i don't think there's any other basic stuff that i need to mention because i made this video thinking that hey if somebody bought the game today and wanted to learn more about it to get started what video could that person watch and that's why i made this video and i think this gives a very good overview of how to get started and from here on forth is just learning weapons smoke grenades and so on to just get better at the game but i think the basics are covered right here i want to thank you all very much for watching this video i hope you have enjoyed it bless your beautiful beautiful soul hugs and kisses and i'll see you guys later